Let's turn today to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5. In our last study, we were considering the first four verses of this chapter, and we saw how the Old Testament saints, the ones who came out of Egypt, had a threefold experience of being redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, being baptized in the Red Sea, symbolic of immersion, water baptism, and were baptized in the cloud that came from above, symbolic of the baptism in the Holy Spirit and fire. And they all ate the same spiritual food, symbolic of daily feeding on God's word, and drank the same spiritual drink, symbolic of constant drinking of the Holy Spirit and his life and his power in us. And just like food and drink are constant necessities in our life, God's word and God's spirit are constant necessities in the life of any true Christian. Now, even though these people had all these experiences, and it was only symbolic, they didn't have the reality, we know they didn't have any reality of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, or reality of feeding on God's word, or reality of drinking of the Holy Spirit, but they had it all in symbol. And up to the light that they had, God had led them on, but in spite of this, it says in verse 5, God was not pleased with the vast majority of them. With most of them, verse 5 means, with the great majority of them, God was not pleased. And the proof of this was that they were all laid low in the wilderness. Their dead bones lay strewn about in the wilderness. As it says in one translation, the desert was strewn with their corpses. And how many corpses? The corpses of nearly two million people over a period of 40 years. Why did God bring such a judgment on these people who were redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, who were baptized in the sea unto Moses, who were baptized in the cloud, and who ate the manna and drank from the rock that was smitten? There was a reason. They were unbelieving. They were unfaithful. And this is written, it says in verse 11, for our instruction. Now, it's always important when we study the scriptures to see the context in which a particular scripture is written. The context here is what we considered in an earlier study in chapter 9, verse 27. That I can be a preacher to other people and be disqualified finally myself. I can proclaim about redemption by the blood of the Lamb. I can proclaim and even experience water baptism and baptism in the Holy Spirit. I can read the word of God daily and experience the Holy Spirit's power. And yet, by unfaithfulness, 1 Corinthians 9.27, by not keeping my body under the control of the Holy Spirit, by not making my body do what it should do, not what it wants to do, by not making my body a slave of the Holy Spirit, I can be finally disqualified even though I had all these spiritual experiences. That is the point, and we should never forget the point at which Paul is driving in all this. That the mere fact of our having gone through certain spiritual experiences in the beginning of our Christian life does not prove that we will qualify at the finishing line of the race. We can be disqualified. The only thing, and it's very important for us to see this, that can enable us to qualify at the end of the finishing line is if we have disciplined our bodily lusts by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is why the way we treat our body, whether we yield it to God or yield it to our own lusts, determines whether we will qualify at the finishing line. And how important it is for us to see this. And this is why he says about the, he tells them about the Israelites in the Old Testament. For 1 Corinthians 10, 1 begins with the word for or because. I don't want you to be unaware. That means it's connected to 1 Corinthians 9, 27. He's saying, I want to warn you, dear friends, about all the Israelites who were redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, symbolically baptized in water, baptized in the Holy Spirit, symbolically receiving the food of God's word every day, and drinking the spiritual drink, etc. Yet, God was not pleased with them. How many out of those 600,000 men between the ages of 20 and 60 who came out of Egypt was God pleased with. He was pleased with only two of them. 
That was Joshua and Caleb. Only Joshua and Caleb. None of the others. So, when it says the vast majority, it is quite a huge majority. It's more than 99% of the people who were redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, God was not pleased with. And why has God given us such a severe warning in the New Testament? That it is possible even today, for these things, verse 11, are written as an example and written for our instruction, who are living in this New Testament age that it is possible for us to be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, to be baptized in water and baptized in the Holy Spirit, and yet for God not to be pleased with us. That's the point. God may not be pleased with us, even though we have had all these experiences. Now, this doesn't mean that God forsook them in the sense of not giving them food. No. During those 40 years in the wilderness, they received food to eat, water to drink, their clothes never wore out, their Sandals never wore out. God did supernatural miracles for them, healed them of snake bites, and many, many supernatural miracles. In fact, that crowd of 600,000 people saw some of the greatest miracles that any human being has ever seen on the face of this earth. The plagues in Egypt, the splitting of the Red Sea, and many other miracles in the wilderness, daily manna falling from heaven. Think of all those miracles. And even though they had answers to prayer, healing from their sickness, Material blessings in plenty, yet God was not pleased with them. Verse 5 of 1 Corinthians 10. What does this teach us, dear friends? It teaches us that material blessing is no proof of God's blessing. It's no proof that God is happy with us. It is God's blessing in a sense, but it's not God's greatest blessing. The greatest blessing that God can ever give to any Christian is to transform him into the likeness of Christ increasingly. If that is not taking place in our lives, God may answer our prayers, heal our sicknesses, bless us materially, prosper us in every possible way, and yet he may not be happy with us. That is the warning for those who have years to hear from 1 Corinthians 10, verses 1 to 5. It's possible for 600,000 people to be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb baptized in water and the Holy Spirit and fire, and yet only two of them may be pleasing to the Lord. All 600,000 may get answers to prayer and material blessings, but only two are pleasing to the Lord. Why? Because the others are careless in their attitude to sin. And we find an exact parallel in a lot of Christendom today, where Christians who are baptized in water and in the Holy Spirit yet develop a careless attitude to sin in their personal life. And that's what he goes on to speak about in verses 6 to 10. These things happened as examples for us, it says. So clear. That's not just written there for us to read, but it's an example and a warning for us that we should not crave after evil things, that we should not be careless in our attitude to sin, as they also craved. First, we should not be idolaters. Before that, he puts it all under the general category of lust. We should not crave after evil things. Verse 6 means that we should not keep on lusting. We should not allow our lusts to control us. We should not yield our bodies as slaves to the lusts that dwell in our flesh. That is the paraphrase of verse 6. We should not lust after evil things. There are dirty lusts in our flesh, but we must put them to death in the power of the Holy Spirit. Verse 7, we should not be idolaters. And what is an idolater? An idolater is one who has something in his life other than God as the primary thing in his life. Anything that takes the place that God should have in our heart is an idol. It can be money. The pursuit of money makes a man an idolater. It can be a job. It can be some loved one, some boyfriend, girlfriend, some child can be an idol. Some personal ambition in life can be an idol. Don't be idolaters, it says. John writing to Christians says in 1 John 5.20, little children, keep yourself from idols. What type of idols? Idols in the heart. Even in the Old Testament, in Ezekiel chapter 14, the Lord spoke through the prophet Ezekiel about those who set up idols in their hearts. Ezekiel 14 verse 3. The idols in our hearts 
are more dangerous than external idols. The people sat down to eat and drink. Eating and drinking can be a form of idolatry. Where food becomes our God. And they stood up to play. Playing, dancing, pleasing ourselves can be a form of idolatry. And then he speaks about immorality. Verse 8. Immorality, looseness in the sex area, led many of them to fall. 23,000 fell in one day. Testing the Lord, verse 9, tempting him by displeasing him, not keeping his commandments. Grumbling, verse 10. These were some of the things that made God displeased with them. And these things are written for our instruction. So let's take heed to these things and be careful. Not rely on past experience, but put to death the lusts in our flesh day by day.